Hey guys, so we have the radio set up and I've actually moved the antenna. I want to go ahead and just give a good uh, big shout out to uh, Romeo 2 Alpha Uniform Kilo. Uh, my last video where I put up the apartment antenna, he suggested that I uh, throw a rope over the, the tree with uh, some little heavier so I could get the antenna up in the air. So I actually did that today. I think it's a little bit less notable, noticeable now that it's off the ground, but I'm going to show you guys real quick before I get the video started, but I just want to show you uh, some of the digital stuff that I have set up right now. Alright, it's a little loud out here, but I'm going to show you guys quickly just what we changed. So, uh, the feed point here is actually connected to the balcony, and the antenna goes up now into the top of the tree. Hopefully, uh, you know, I don't know how well it's going to stay there, but... Uh, we did get a little bit more uh, height off the ground, so hopefully this will work out pretty well. If not, um, you know, it's an easy way to just kind of take it out and put it where it needs to be. Alright, so with our antenna a little bit higher up in the air, um, I just want to kind of show you guys what kind of coverage I have with the antenna now that it's up in the apartment a little bit higher. So what we're going to do is uh, look at some FT8 on the, um, the 40 meter band. So as it stands right now, I have the radio and I've ordered the, uh, the audio interface cables so we can do some digital modes you know, with the receive and transmit. But in the meantime, uh, the most that I can do is just monitor the, uh, the airwaves and just kind of listen in because it has a uh, headphone jack here on the FT450D. Uh, it has a, a headphone jack which we can wire straight into our computer's uh, microphone jack as long as we keep the audio level relatively low. Uh, it won't supply too much voltage. So using that, we can go ahead and just use. And I'm going to go ahead and say I'm not trying to teach anybody anything. This is more so just to kind of bring interest into the hobby, uh, and kind of show people what, what's going on out here. So I'm going to go ahead and audio interface the radio into the computer with a 3.5 millimeter jack, which is pretty much just going to be audio. So this is audio flowing into the mic microphone input of my computer from the radio, right? And we're going to go ahead and turn it up, but we don't want it too loud. Go ahead and hook that jack in there. Once our audio is hooked in, uh, we're going to go ahead and open a program that's going to allow us to see um, the WSJT-X program is one of the main FT8 uh, protocol uh, programs. And uh, what you're seeing on the screen here is the band activity and the RX frequency. So we're going to be listening in on the um, the 40 meter band. So we're going to tune our radio to 7.078. Uh, actually, no, we're, so we need to put it on FT8 first. And we're going to go ahead and put it on 7.074. So we're going to go down a couple bands here. and tune to the 7.074. We're going to see if we hear any activity. Um, our noise floor is quite high. Like, actually really high. So we'll, we'll see how this is going to work out. Because it might not, but we'll see. So our radio is tuned to the frequency um, for 40 meters for FT8. So let's just give it a second here and let it cycle through. And um, so we're not seeing anything, which is fine, because um, our noise floor is quite high. I think it's probably using my headphone jack as the um, antenna. We're going to switch to uh, 20 meters. So we hear anything there. 14074. And the noise floor is much lower here. So hopefully we'll have some better luck. And we're going to let this go ahead and cycle through. <clears throat> and as you can see, we're seeing some activity on the screen here. So uh, what you're seeing here is this call sign and uh, your grid coordinates, um, your uh, your power and time. So that's kind of cool in itself. We can see stations popping up 
and this is through the audio port on the computer. And if you want to hear what that sounds like on the radio, it's like this. So that's what the FT8 sounds like. But what's really cool is I have a program here that we can open called Grid Tracker that will link um, to this program and pull all those grids out and label them on a map so we can see visually where we're hearing all these stations from. So just give it a minute to refresh here and we can go ahead and just start seeing stations kind of pop up on the map. So there we go. So we just got a, looks like we got a packet from Texas, a packet from Florida, and a packet from Italy, and a packet from the Netherlands. So uh, we'll just let this populate for a moment here. This is really cool because even though the noise floor is a little high, I'm in an apartment complex, we're still able to see um, these packets coming through. So it looks like we just got another one from Italy and another from Azeros. Azeros. Yeah, if I let this run, it's going to it's going to start picking up more and more contacts and more and more places. Like we just got one from Cuba. Um, and this is none of this is linked to the internet. This is all going through the radio. Uh, through the 3.5 millimeter jack as the audio is being fed in a computer and the computer is decoding the audio and to the packets and um, from there it's taking the grid coordinates from the packets and showing them uh, where all they're coming from in our few minutes here working we were able to we've heard this many different countries here it's one two three, four, five, six, seven, that's eight countries. So it's like super cool that we're able to do that. Um, and like I said, if I let it ran, run longer, I'm sure we would rack up more from all kinds of different places. But already in the US, we're picking up a lot. It looks like we just got one from Panama. So that's cool. It's like a, much further south. But uh, let's, we can move on to some other modes and I can show you uh, there's more than, more than this. There's a, uh, SSTV, which is an image digital mode where digital, where it sends um, information over the air to construct images, and there's certain frequencies put away for that, and people can send images around the world over radio. Uh, there's WinLink, you can send emails around the world over radio. So I'll just show you guys some of these while I can, like with just listening in, because uh, we can't transmit yet. <clears throat> so the next digital. Uh, thing I'm going to kind of show you guys is uh, called it's a format called PSK31 or a protocol and uh, it relies on phase shift keying to uh, send audio to convert it to letters so people use this and they can it's kind of like texting over the radio um, but we'll use a different program to decode that and um, one of the big frequencies for it is 14070 on the uh, 20 meter band so we'll go ahead and open that up, and uh, this program is automatically going to start um, uh, decoding PSK31 as it comes through. So this right here, this line right here is a PSK31. So there, there's the call sign, and here we can see the text coming through. In Central Florida, the name is John Bravo Kilo Tango Uniform. So uh, that was a pretty obvious message there. It's <clears throat> John in Florida. I am 10 miles south of Omaha in something Nebraska. So yeah, that's uh, super cool that we're able to just kind of also send that information over uh, the radio around the world with text. It's not, the radio is not all just voice, which there are voice uh, modes, uh, single sideband. So this video is not made for those that know a lot about ham radio. This is kind of just trying to bring in interest into the hobby, to show that there's a lot more to this, like kind of talking over voice. There's a lot of digital aspects as well. So um, north of Tampa, 
temperature is 80, 78 Fahrenheit, 26 degrees Celsius. But that's a strong signal, signal coming in. I can't really see the other guy, I don't think. Because a lot of times the ham radio, well, this guy's communicating, this guy's communicating. You might be closer to one of them, you can hear them, but you can't hear the other. So sometimes you don't get the... Um, Oh, this guy, you were my first contact in almost two years. Haven't fired up the rig in that long due to a number of issues. I am glad to finally be getting on the air again. Back on the air again. Oh, whatever. Anyways. So yeah, that's PSK31 phase shift keying, um, really cool. You're able to kind of send text over the radio over the air. If you're wondering what that sounds like, it's uh, like this. It sounds wavering in a little bit, but it's that that whining sound. If you pay attention, there's little dits, and that's pretty much how uh, that's PSK31. So this is the app I have for uh, SSTV, and the frequency you want to listen to this is going to be 14 to 30. Now I noticed that this isn't nearly as active as the other modes. Not everybody's always seeing an image. So what we can do, what we can transmit with is um, SSTV because the um, it's not as um, finicky when you transmit the sound. So what I can do is just hold the mic up to a speaker and uh, transmit the audio as it comes through. So what we'll do is just transmit a CQ image like calling station, put my call sign out there on the image as you see here. Oops. So it'll look like that. And um, we'll see if we get anything back. So what we just did was uh, pretty much I held my headset up to the mic as I transmitted our SSTV image, um, which that uses a lot of power uh, because you're held down the entire time. But uh, basically, now I'll just wait, and if somebody heard the image and they were able to decode it in time, then they've got the, my, C call, my CQ message, and now, now looking to... Um, send it back. KC5 LBO. Yep, I mean, that looks right to me. So now we're just going to go ahead and just retransmit that, set our audio to come through our headset. We'll listen just for a few more minutes. Uh, this is a different call sign. All right, I had to mute the speaker. I don't even know if my voice was heard before. Try to reply to him, but uh, I might have got the uh, the call sign wrong. But I see one coming through here. Uh, so I've never done N uh, SSTV contact like that. But um, either way, we got an image. Now we're getting another one, so that's kind of cool. Uh, this one's using Scotty one too. Hopefully the the baud rate on Scotty 2 wasn't too high for this band. Um, that that was a rookie mistake if it was. But uh, yeah, so it looks like we are getting images. 
and uh, they're coming through the radio through the air and uh, we can even see uh, really where this image is coming from if we uh, look the, the call sign up we can see we can also look up this one here so let's see a uh, KC5 LBO it looks like this one's out of Texas so that's kinda cool we got an image from Texas uh, this right here is from a whiskey I have no clue to be honest I, I don't know that second caricature it's a whiskey something for Yankee Zulu Wh whiskey Romeo that's not right that can't be Anyways, yeah, so we can transmit images too, so that's really cool. Uh, anyways, I just really wanted to make this video to kind of show off, uh, the chair's tangled up, to show off some of the digital modes in ham radio and what, what's more capable besides uh, voice, because when you think of radio, you think you know, you're talking over the, the hand mic, but you can transmit images, you can transmit data packets, you can transmit text, uh, emails, there's all sorts of things you can do with these. So anyways, just wanted to uh, kind of update, update you guys on the antennas, and um, thanks for watching. If you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff in the future, especially when we're able to transmit.